p.m. This meeting is called to order. Madam Clerk, would you? City Attorney Joden. Here. City Manager Harlow Shelk. Here. Commissioner Halliday. Uh, just a moment, Mr. Mayor, he may be trapped in the attendees. Can go on. Commissioner Halliday is on. He's converting over to the panelists now. Commissioner Dean. Here. Here. Commissioner Logan. Here. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Here. Mayor Collins. Here. Welcome and thank you for participating in the City of Helena City Commission meeting. We are pleased to be able to provide this alternative meeting format in the city's effort to broaden public participation. Please be patient as we may experience technical difficulties during the meeting. We welcome your public commentary. Please read the following tips and guidelines for the app usage and your participation. Would you rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance. Good evening and welcome again. At this time, we will have a few presentations. Approval of confirmation of firefighter Chris Mork and Assistant Chief John Campbell. Manager Halshock. Thank you, Mayor. It's my honor to ask that you please bring forward firefighter Chris Mork and Assistant, uh, Assistant Chief John Campbell for that confirmation. So uh, commissioners, any comments, questions? Okay, Fire Chief. Okay. This is the oath of office. <clears throat> you repeat your name when I say I. Okay. I. Chris Mork. Recognize my obligation as a firefighter. Recognize my obligation as a firefighter. For the city of Helena. For the city of Helena. To protect and preserve. To protect and preserve. Life and property of the public. Life and property of the public. I serve. I, I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Montana. And the Constitution of the State of Montana. I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties. I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the Office of Firefighter for the City of Helena Fire Department. Of the Office of Firefighter for the City Fire Department, Fire Department. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. According to the best of my abilities and understanding. Hey, Chief. We have the acting chief who is gonna be taking his oath of office as assistant fire chief. I. I, John Campbell. Recognize my obligation as chief, assistant chief. Recognize my obligation as assistant chief. For the city of Helena. For the city of Helena. To protect and preserve. To 
Protect and preserve. Life and property. Life and property. Of the public I serve. Of the public I serve. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Montana. And the Constitution of the State of Montana. I will faithfully and impartially discharge. I will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of the Office of Assistant Chief. The duties of the Office of Assistant Chief for the City of Helena Fire Department. For the City of Helena Fire Department. According to the best of my ability and understanding. According to the best of my ability and understanding. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the City of Helena's Fire Department, I'm truly honored and humbled to be in this position, have this opportunity. Uh, mostly at this time, I want to thank my wife and kids for moving with me here. And, uh, we're very uh, pleased with the reception and uh, professionalism, dedication of the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any words from the commission? Mr. Mayor, Mayor? Just briefly. Go, Go ahead. ahead Commissioner Mr. Green. Well, thank you. Uh, just briefly, just wanted to thank both of these gentlemen for for their, uh, you know, I know they've been with us for about a year, but um, for their service to uh, Helena thus far and and um, to Helena in the future. It, it uh, particular, and I know uh, Chief Campbell is a veteran of the fire service, and and Mr. Mork is. Maybe a little bit newer to it. Um, uh, he'll be in for quite a ride. So anyway, appreciate both their, uh, both of them stepping forward and filling these roles. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any others? Mr. Mayor, I just want to echo um, Commissioner Logan's thoughts um, and congratulations and thank you. Um, to Mr. Mork and, and Chief Campbell. Um, a logistics question, do we need to make a motion before we move on? Good question. Yes, let's, well, let's listen to the rest of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the rest of the commissioners. Are you done, commissioner? I am done, yep. Oh, okay. any others? Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll move to approve the confirmation of firefighter Chris Mork and Assistant Chief John Campbell. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Congratulations, Chief and uh, Mr. Morgan. Let's give them a round of applause again. Fire Prevention Week, proclamation. City of Helena. What are firefighters going? And this is about you. Where are they going? <laughs> city of Helena proclamation. Whereas the city of Helena, Montana is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting our state. And whereas fire is a serious public safety concern, both locally and nationally. And homes are the locations where people are at greatest risk from fire. And whereas home fires killed more than 2,770 people in the United States in 2019, according to the National Fire Protection Association, and fire departments in the United States responded to 339,500 homes fires. And whereas smoke alarms sense smoke well before you can, alerting you to the dangers in the event of fire in which you may have a little as two minutes 
to escape safely. And whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half. And whereas the city of Helena, Montana residents should be sure everyone in the home understands the sound of alarms and knows how to respond. And whereas the city of Helena, Montana residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire. And whereas the city of Helena, Montana residents will make sure the smoke and CO alarm meets the need of their family members, including those with sensory or physical disabilities. And whereas the city of Helena, Montana first responders are dedicated to reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas the city of Helena, Montana residents are responsive to public education measures are better able to take personal steps to increase their safety from fire, especially in their homes. And whereas the 2021 Fire Prevention Week theme, Learn the Sounds of Fire Safety, effectively serves to remind us it is important to learn the different sounds of smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Will McCullens, Mayor of the City of Helena, Montana, do hereby proclaim October 3rd through the 9th as Fire Prevention Week. Throughout this city, and I urge all the people of Helena to learn the sounds of fire safety for Fire Prevention Week 2021 and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of Montana Fire and Emergencies, Emergency Services. In witness whereof, I here unto set my hand and cause the seal of the city of Helena, Montana to be affixed this fourth day of October 2021. Will McCollins, Mayor, Clerk of the Commission, Danae Claiborne. Chief, you want to come and receive the proclamation? Thank you to our dynamic firefighters and EMTs and first responders. Board appointments. Helena Open Land Management Advisory Committee, Non-Motorized Transportation Committee, Lewis and Clark County Heritage Preservation Committee. I'm, I'm recommending the following board appointments. Non-Motorized Transportation Committee, reappointment of Greg Worth to a second term on the Non-Motorized Transportation Committee. Term will begin upon appointment and expires on March 31st, 2024. Reappointment of Aaron Woodrow to a second term on the Non-Motorized Transportation Committee. Term will begin upon appointment and expires on March 31st, 2024. Helena Open Lands Management Advisory Committee. Appointment of Joe Pitten to an interim appointment on whole map. Term will begin upon appointment and expires June 30, 2021. Lewis and Clark County Heritage Preservation Committee. Appointment of Sandy Smith to an interim term on the Lewis and Clark County Heritage Preservation Committee. Term will begin upon appointment and expires June 30, 2023. Any discussions from the commission? Maybe just a quick question, Mr. Mayor. Um, the On the HOMAC one, it lists June 30, 2021. Do we know if that's correct or if it should be 2022 or even 2023? What was your question again for HOMAC? I see here June 30th, 2021. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, that's a typo, and I apologize. I meant okay. to change that after our uh, Commissioner Holiday picked it up at the admin meeting. It should read 2022. So apologies for that. You bet. And I um, want to um, inform the um, commission that we will be removing, we will be readjusting our agenda 
three Bravo to go down to where we have public comments statements. And three Bravo is the update on the ADA trail project on Mount Helena. Mayor, I can make a motion. Um, Please. I, I would move reappointment of Greg Worth to a second term on non-motorized transportation to begin upon appointment and expire March 31, 2024. Reappointment of Aaron Bortro to a second term on non-motorized transportation to begin upon appointment and expire on March 31, 2024. Appointment of Joel Peden to an interim appointment on HOMAC term to begin upon appointment and expire June 30, 2022. An appointment of Sandy Smith to an interim Appointment on the Lewis and Clark County Heritage Preservation Committee term will begin upon appointment and expire June 30, 2023. Second. Do we have any, any final comments? If not, it's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Consent agenda, Madam Hollishaw. Thank you, Mayor. This is a uh, resolution uh, that adopts revised local limits for permitted industrial dischargers to the wastewater treatment plant. The uh, limitations are not uh, of significant um, impact onto our current users and have been in place for uh, uh, quite a while. This adoption is just to ensure that it is made publicly aware that these permit limits have been adopted and are being implemented. Thank you. Comments or questions from the commission? Any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk, any raised hands? Um, Mr. Mayor, I have no raised hands online and no written public comment. Okay, any discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor, I'll go ahead and move the consent agenda item A, uh, approval of the resolution adopting revised local limits for permitted industrial dischargers to the wastewater treatment plan. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Communications proposals from the commission. Any communications from the, from the commission? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. I do just have um, a brief reminder for folks um, that this weekend is homecoming and family weekend at Carroll College. Um, so we'll be welcoming lots of families to town um, and just wanna encourage folks to attend the improv show, volleyball game and football game um, and welcome all those who are going to um, spend their time here in Helena this weekend. And good luck to both volleyball team and the football team. Thank you, Commissioner. Any others? Okay, thank you. Report of the city attorney. Mayor, commissioners, nothing to report this evening. Report of the city manager. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Mayor. Quickly, I just wanted to share that for fire prevention week with the many multi-family fires that we've seen recently, not only will there be a number of outreach activities, but most importantly, a focus on the need for better preparation in all levels in these units around uh, how to address the loss uh, when you are in a fire. So our uh, fire marshal and public information office are focusing in on this effort during fire prevention week. Additionally, I'd like to uh, underscore that uh, force preventive work that our parks team and parks and open lands team participates in, which has a significant impact. And we got to see that play out at Knob Hill. Of course, we had a terrific amount of partners in response at that event, but on that fire, but that was also part of preventive activities um, in fire prevention. So we just wanted to underscore that. And it was great to see tonight's confirmation with uh, our new chief 
Campbell, who's serving interim, knowing we have a good pool and uh, look forward to going through the pool for fire chief as it has closed and closed last week. That's all I have to report chief or mayor about the chief. <laughs> okay, thank you, Madam Holishok. Communications from Helena Citizens Council. Helena Citizens Council Representative Susan Stephens. Uh, yeah, we're we're just um, looking forward to elections. We're actually being um, will be some competitive districts this year, and um, so we're gearing up for that. We aren't really uh, doing anything too much. Last meeting we had. Um, parks come in. We've had some really good speakers that have kept us abreast of everything that's going on in the city. And I will go back and report again what uh, is going on in the meeting. We talked a lot about, we had a huge uh, forum last time, which was really good, Mayor Collins, on homelessness. We spent about an hour and we had Sharon Haugen and a lot of representatives come in and it was very, very good. And we had some public comment. It was excellent. So that's where we are, we're just waiting. We will not have a meeting in December, but we will have our next meeting October and November. And then the new board will come on, the new representatives in January. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stephens. Regular items. Consider a resolution amending resolution number 20551 to add marijuana to the volunteer outdoor smoke-free areas. City Manager Holishock, City Attorney Jordan. Thank you, Mayor. This item is brought forward to amend the out voluntary outdoor smoke-free program to include marijuana. Recently, the commission heard during an administrative meeting the uh, needed M changes to our operations once the retail um, uh, marijuana is a, a, a applies in the city of Helena. As part of that, this uh, resolution will restrict um, the outdoor smoking of marijuana voluntarily within the current tobacco outdoor smoking program. And uh, city attorney Joden is also in attendance online if you have further questions on those technical details of this resolution. Do you want to say something before we go to the commission, uh, Attorney Jordan? Uh, Mayor, commissioners, just to reiterate, um, this amends a resolution that the commission adopted in 2019. It's a it's a voluntary program that the commission will remember. Uh, myself and interim manager uh, Taylor worked with um, the county health folks and local businesses in town to come up with this voluntary program that supplements the Montana Clean Indoor Air Act, which already precludes the smoking of marijuana indoors. And this just makes it clear that part of that voluntary program, if the businesses are going to participate and we do encourage, encourage them to do so, uh, marijuana would also be included. Thank you. Do you have any comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. I do have one question. I'm wondering, do we know how many um, businesses participate in this voluntary program? Mayor, Commissioners, I don't know the answer to that, but I can certainly follow up with Drenda. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Are there any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk, do we have any raised hands? Um, Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, I see no hands raised online, no written public comment, and no one in chambers appears to be here to make public comment. Okay, I'll entertain a motion then. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you. I would uh, move to approval a resolution amending resolution number 20551 to add marijuana to voluntary outdoor smoke-free areas. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you.
Consider first passage of an ordinance amending Title VII, Chapter 13 of the Helena City Code by enacting new 7-13-6, which requires an application fee and cost reimbursement for cable and telecommunications franchises, an agreement to use city right-of-way or other properties for the installment of telecommunications facilities. Manager Holloshock, City Attorney Jordan. Thank you, Mayor. This item is brought forward much in the same vein of uh, the opportunity for those that expand services and uh, develop inside the city of Helena also um, impact the operations significantly enough that the otherwise burdened workload of the team, which has already been covered by those assessments and fees and taxes by our city are actually offset by what is the, the greater of the two, which is new, a new burden. In the last several months, we have received a large influx of cable and telecommunication franchise agreements and compl complex questions related to the city's rights of way. And those have required consultation. A great deal of that time is not something within our team we have, nor do we have the expertise. So this item uh, allows for us to seek reimbursement for those costs. And also city attorney Jordan is available for further technical questions as you have them. Attorney Jordan, do you have anything you wanna say? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Uh, just real briefly, um, this is the start of a multi-prong effort. Um, this does this creates the application fee. Uh, we'll set a public hearing uh, for October 18th. Um, we will also bring forward a resolution of intention on October 15th or 18th to set that fee uh, for these sorts of applications to try to recoup some of these costs uh, that we are are seeing. And then as part of all of this, we will be bringing the uh, franchise agreement ordinance with TDS. Um, they're one of the companies that has applied for a cable TV franchise. Um, and so this is one of many actions you'll be seeing over the next six weeks to bring our regulatory structure up to speed up to 2021 to handle all of these telecom requests that, that we are seeing to use rights of way and city property. Um, I will, uh, when we do bring the resolution of intention forward, setting the actual fee, uh, I will provide more detail uh, in the memo of how we arranged uh, the fee to be established. Thank you, Attorney Jordan. Any comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. I do have one question and um, we all know time is money, but I'm, I'm curious, do we have, I mean, do we have enough staff capacity as it is right now to meet these demands um, even with, it, even if this does pass? Manager Hollishaw, Manager Jordan. Thank you, Mayor. The, currently we have nearly exhausted what we have available for this type of technical review. And we are at the, first quarter of the year. So uh, no, we do not have sufficient resources currently and would be looking for that additional uh, dollar to help cover those costs. Thank you. I will add Mayor Commissioner Dean that um, TDS has agreed to reimburse the city its costs for outside council to assist us to run through the franchise agreement and ordinance with them. They voluntarily agreed to that, even though we don't have the ordinance um, in place and the authority they, they have already agreed to pay that. And it's uh, at last check, it's approximately $5,500 just for TDS, which uh, is a relatively straightforward process for cable TV franchises because um, we have to largely mirror the existing franchise that we have with, you know, Bresnan charter uh, spectrum going way back. Um, so there isn't a ton of work to do. It's, it's the um, telecom broadband ones that are, are a new frontier for us. Thank so you. Yes. Oh, a follow up, Mr. Mayor, if I could. Um, so I guess with that, and this is probably for city manager Harlow Shock, do you anticipate that we'll have 
um, additional FTEs included in this year's budget? And will all of these fees cover that increased cost if we do anticipate it to be in this next year's budget? Manager Hollishaw. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Commissioner. At this time, I do not. I don't have a really good feel for the Ida Burden. A lot of the inquiry and interest is in relationship to an anticipation for expansion in uh, broadband and network services across the country with potential um, support by a federal infrastructure bill. Outside of that, um, Helena is a location that has a primary hub where there are there is a larger uh, and greater interest in just expansion within the city of Helena. These kinds of fees are fairly common and they're informed by uh, consultation so that we are not acting outside of what is common practice. Thank you, manager. Any other comments from the commission? And maybe just a question from Mr. Jordan. So um, I know we had some discussions about parity in contracts when the last um, agreement was entered with Carter Spectrum, Resin, whatever it was at the time. Um, so how does it work? And I think I asked this the last, the last time we did this, when you have an existing contract and you seek parity with the next market entrant and then maybe another one, and then the original agreement comes up since you already have existing contracts, you know, when do we get that opportunity to talk with our consultants about doing greater and better? Other cities, you know, request multiple lines to schools, um, to the civic center, so we can broadcast programming for the community. How how do we do that if we're always looking back at the pre-existing contracts, um, which will then always look the same? Right, um, Mayor Collins, Commissioner Halliday. That's that's a good question. The spectrum agreement is set to expire in 2027. Um, we did not match up, TDS would not agree to match up um, their franchise agreement with that date. And so if approved this year, it will go to 20, 2031, a 10 year agreement. Um, I, th I think the most practical way, although it may be impractical, and I think that's perhaps your point is, if we do open up one and we change it with Spectrum, because they're first, we're gonna have to also open it up or try to convince TDS to open up their contract as well. Um, and that's the difficulty with this. We've only we've only had one um, cable franchisee. Uh, two is probably good for a competition, but it, there is a, a downside with these two contracts not lining up uh, to expire at the same time. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm glad overall to see this. Um, just as a comment, it's um, we would we would it always kind of felt like we were going into a, a knife fight with a couple of out of date legal books. Um, whenever we negotiated these contracts in the past, so it would be nice to see um, to see us using some of that money for some outside consulting to really understand. We usually always get someone from the Spectrum's customer service department basically telling us what we could and couldn't do, and it was always hard to really get a picture of what we could ask for and achieve for Helen as residents. So um, appreciate you bringing it forward. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Yeah, Mayor, I have one question. Please, go ahead. Um, so this is probably, probably for the city attorney, just based off of your research of how other municipalities handle it. Is this pretty consistent with how, how other cities are, are doing this? Mayor Collins, Commissioner O'Loughlin, yes, although no, I mean, I'm actually proud to say that no other cities in Montana have this structure yet. We're, we're in the lead. Um, Billings, just entered into a cable franchise agreement with TDS, I wanna say maybe three months ago. Um, I don't know if they agreed to fees, but I know they did not have a fee structure in place, especially um, to recoup outside counsel, outside expert, expertise costs. May, I, I suspect that they had internal costs for staff time uh, that, you know, were because when you get these applications in, you're, you're diverting time that you didn't necessarily plan for, for from other projects. But we're definitely in the lead with recouping actual costs uh, for engaging with outside counsel. And our outside counsel is River Oaks Communications down in Colorado, very knowledgeable, has assisted many other cities across the West and Intermountain West 
Um, and these are routine fees that are set almost universally with cities that are much larger uh, than us. M Mayor, if I may. Please go ahead. Uh, also, yeah. the, um, the previously when I worked for the state of Colorado, my team was in charge of the rural uh, broadband program and we've been engaging that expertise as well um, uh, uh, all along this conversation to ensure that we're uh, leveraging the opportunities that others have identified to the benefit of the city of Helena by looking at uh, lessons learned that they've had over time, not only in these kinds of agreements, but also in constructions and uh, construction and the use of uh, rights of way. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, I have no hands raised online, no written public comment, and no one in chambers to make public comment on this item. Thank you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I will move to approve first passage of an ordinance amending Title VII, Chapter 13 of the Helena City Code by enacting new Title VII-13-6, application fee and cost reimbursement for cable and telecommunications franchises and agreements for the use of city right of way or other property for telecommunications facilities and setting a public hearing for October 18th, 2021. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any final discussion? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Public hearings. Consider a resolution authorizing the city of Helena to apply for a community development block grant, CARES, CDBG, grant administered by the Montana Department of Commerce on behalf of the Helena Area Habitat for Humanity and authorizing the city manager to execute any document necessary for the grant application and award. Manager Holoshock. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners, this item and the next are both applications for the Community Development Block Grant Program through the Coronavirus Relief Fund. The Coronavirus Relief Fund, fund also known as the CARES Act, was put into place last year. Those dollars for the Community Development Block Grant Program are uh, being distributed now through the Department of Commerce. Uh, this grant application is specific for the Helen area, Helena Area Habitat for Humanity. The city of Helena can su submit two applications and um, this is one of them. I understand that uh, Sharon Haugen and her team are on, Director Haugen are on the line to provide further detail as you uh, may need. Thank you. Uh, Director Haugen. Uh, Mr. Mayor, commissioners, good evening. Tonight, as the manager indicated, we are going to have two hearings, which are a requirement of the Community Development Block Grant Program for consideration for authorizing the submission of a Community Development Block Grant for a Habitat for Humanity so that they can um, construct uh, an accessory dwelling unit or a total of two more units on a piece of property that was donated to them. That's our first grant application. Uh, Kara Snyder and I, try, Kara Snyder from my staff is here to kind of go over the grant. And we also have representatives from Helen Area Habitat for Humanity to answer questions. So with your permission, I'd like to turn it over to um, Ms. Snyder for her presentation. Please, you have to flow Ms. Snyder. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, so I'll just highlight a few things here um, from the memo. Um, this project, uh, like Sharon said, is, will create two permanently affordable homes in Helena for home ownership opportunities during a time when the need is more critical than ever. Um, Helena Habitat for Humanity has requested the city sponsor uh, this grant application for the major renovation of two units located at 1000 Shoto. 
The first unit is an existing four bedroom, two bath home with a single car garage that will be sold for approximately $175,000 to $190,000. Um, the second unit is an existing two car garage that will be converted to a two bedroom, one bathroom accessory dwelling unit uh, for sale um, at an estimated $145,000 to $160,000. Um, upon completion of the project, the land will be transferred to a land trust and governed by a ground lease in perpetuity. Uh, the two completed units will be sold to individual buyers with incomes below 80% of the area median income. The land, will, uh, the land trust will manage any future resales of the property, ensuring the homes remain in the stock of affordable homes in Helena. Total project costs are estimated at $331,120 with $169,440 being requested through um, the CDBG CV funds. The remaining costs will be covered through shop funds, um, the Habitat General Fund, and a construction loan. And this uh, project also aligns um, with the city of Helena's growth policy to create safe, um, available, accessible, and affordable housing for all Helena residents. Um, and like Sharon said, I uh, believe Jacob Kuntz, um, Helena Area Habitat for Humanities Executive Director is on. If you have any questions you would like to direct to him, uh, myself, or to Sharon. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Snyder. <clears throat> Do we have any comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor, I do just have a, I'm curious about um, a couple of things with the house. Go ahead, Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Um, well, for it's, I took a drive, it is a darling house and I'm excited for whoever gets to live there. Um, I was curious, just given the lot size um, and that it's going from, I think the memo said a two to a four bedroom house, um, are, are they planning to go up to two stories? Um, and then I guess my second question is, it's just down the block from CR and I'm wondering um, when, when those renovations happen, will sidewalks also go in? I know there's not very many around there. There's one across the street, but um, I'm curious about how those kind of logistics work, but very excited about this project and thanks to Habitat for, for taking it on. Thank you, Director Hagen, you wanna, uh... Mr. Coons, do you want to help answer Commissioner Dean's question? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Sharon Hogan, uh, sidewalks will be required with the construction of the accessory dwelling unit, but I will let uh, Mr. Coons, with your permission, speak to the actual project itself and to the construction of the project. Thank you. Mr. Coons, you have the floor. Thank you, Sharon, um, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Dean. So yes, the, the project does envision uh, in, installation of uh, sidewalks. Uh, the, the project will include the complete renovation of an existing basement that's unfinished to complete the home into a four bedroom, two bath house with egress windows in, in the basement uh, of that home. So it will be four bedroom, two bath, and then the accessory dwelling unit will be the two bedroom, one bath that'll make use of an existing foundation from a garage, a uh, detached garage on the back of the property. Um, I also make note that, um, you know, as uh, Kara mentioned, this is a land trust property, but we're also making use of uh, the changes to the zoning laws, allowing additional units, um, accessory dwelling units, and then our partnership with CWG Architects, we hope to include uh, plans that could be replicated across the city for the addition of accessory dwelling units um, on underutilized lots throughout the city uh, as we see the need for uh, housing increasing in, throughout the community, the need for utilizing these underutilized lots and making use of uh, some of the uh, zoning and accessory dwelling units um, allowances that have been provided are, are more important than ever. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coons. Do we have any other comments or questions from the commission? Do we have any public comments on this topic? Madam Clerk? Mr. Mayor, I do have one raised hand online, Greg Worth. Go ahead, Mr. Worth, you have the floor. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. My name is Greg Worth, 
W-I-R-T-H. I reside at 501 State Street. Um, I am the board chair with Helena Area Habitat for Humanity. And I'd like to thank the city for considering this uh, request for sponsorship of this grant application. Um, with uh, providing the accessory dwelling unit, this is an opportunity to capitalize on some of the recent zoning changes that the city of Helena has implemented to eliminate the single family exclusionary zoning um, to create uh, more opportunities for workforce affordable housing within the city of Helena. And and um, with this grant application, we look forward to many more opportunities where we can work with the city to um, create as much housing opportunities within the city, Helen, as possible. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Worth. Do we have any other? Oh, I see uh, Commissioner Laughlin. You have the floor. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't want to. It looks like there's no one else for public comment, but I did ha have just a quick question, if that's OK. Please. Um, so this is probably to Director Haugen. Um, I, I just thought it would be helpful um, if you could share any sort of sense that you have on um, the Department of Commerce decision making process on these. Um, and I hate to sort of jump to the next item, but both seem incredibly important projects for our community. I, I'm just curious, one, um, did we receive any other proposals or were these the two that uh, that the city received and, and were, you know, we've decided to put them both forward? Do you have a sense of um, how commerce might be thinking about awarding funds? Um, do, do, do we anticipate we might have both projects awarded? Um, would just be helpful to kind of get your sense to the extent we have a sense at this point, um, how commerce is thinking about, uh, you know, the use of these funds. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner O'Loughlin, as you may have guessed, it's always difficult to anticipate what commerce will or will not do. But what we do know of from commerce is that they have about, I think, 10 or $11 million that they have allocated uh, 10 million and 100, the change, they've allocated towards these uh, grant applications. This uh, grant round is different than some in that they are allowing entitlement cities to also participate or compete with the grants. But what their um, rules have indicated is that no, there has to be um, close to, I think, 5 million absolutely has to go to non-entitlement cities, they could have possibly do more. So that kind of sets the stage. Um, we did not, we got some inquiries, but I'll say these are the two proposals who looked over the application and submitted the information for us. Um, the uh, food share did look over it, but they weren't quite prepared at this time to move forward. And then we had some mild inquiries from Rocky Mountain Development Council um, in fact, I got an email from Lori Lattice today that's a little bit late since we had to schedule the public hearing. We are allowed to do um, as many applications as we want as a city. I have no sense of knowing um, how many applications we're going to do because of that. Some communities, I suspect the entitlement cities or the ones that are more, I'll say, fully staffed may asked for several applications. Some of the smaller cities may not. The Department of Commerce has put out ranking criteria or what they call for rankings, rubric, I guess is the term. The focus things that they're gonna be looking at is whether or not the project prevents, prepares for, or responds to COVID-19. Um, and that means that this project is a direct result of that agency's trying to respond, uh, which I think in a way, both of them are. Uh, the, they must, the all block grant money must benefit low to moderate income. So the higher percentage of low to moderate income that you provide, the higher uh, points that you get. They have to show a need for the funding. So the project probably won't get completed unless there is that funding because they are short. I think a lot of nonprofits, had an issue or have an issue that uh, people haven't been able to be as generous as they could before a variety of reasons. 
and whether or not it uh, addresses a critical or a special need in the consolidated plan. The consolidated plan is a statewide plan that looks at the different community development and public facility needs. Both these projects do indeed um, fit one of those categories in the consolidated plan. And one of the last important ones is probably project outcome. And project outcome is where more than likely commerce is going to look at how many people benefit, what's the broader benefit in the community. Um, that's generally how they review those things. Other factors that they look at is project management, uh, the budget, and um, if uh, positive comments they get at the public hearing. So those are generally speaking the criteria that commerce uses. Um, like I said, it all depends on how many applications they got and um, what the projects are actually for. So I don't know if that answered your question, Commissioner O'Loughlin, but if you have a more specific question, I'll try to answer it. No, that's helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, commissioners, I have no other hands raised. And Thank uh, you. I do have one written public comment I'd read into the record. Please. Uh, from an individual listed only as Collins. Do the COVID funds extend? Oh, if, it, if we don't have the full name and all of that, no. All right. Can we Just, ask the person if they're online to please give the full name? Certainly. If the individual listed as Collins could be, please provide their full name. Um, I would note that their uh, written public comment has been put into the permanent record of the meeting. Okay. If no other uh, hands raised, we will, I'll entertain, oh, uh, Manager Hollishaw. I'll entertain a motion. My apologies, thank you. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. I'd move to approve a resolution authorizing the City of Helena to apply for a Community Development Block Grant CARES CDBG-CV grant administered by the Montana Department of Commerce on behalf of the Helena Area Habitat for Humanity and authorizing the City Manager to execute any document necessary for the grant application an award. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any final comments? Uh, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Consider a resolution authorizing the city of Helena to apply for a community development block grant CARES CDBG-CV grant administered by the Montana Department of Commerce on behalf of the YWCA Helena and authorizing the city manager to execute any document necessary for the grant application and award. Manager Hollishawk. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as was done last, Time. This is the opportunity to share the grant application for the YWCA within the CDBG CB program. And I'll turn it over to Director Haugen and her team member, Kara Snyder. You have the floor, Director Haugen. Mr. Mayor, Commissioners, again, this is, a, this is another application for the Community Development Block Grant Program. This application is for the YWCA. It is um, primarily and I'm generalizing here, to make improvements within the YWCA's uh, building and structure. As many of you are, may or may not be aware that um, the YWCA has gone through several renovations, but there are additional things that need to be done. In addition, um, because of the COVID crisis, uh, they have de defined a need to better the in, in um, the ventilation and circulation within the facility also make some other needed repairs to help ensure that the um, building is um, functioning right and in good repair. 
also they would like to complete their basement because their basement, uh, they use that to provide additional services for the families that they serve. And this is an, kind of an expansion of their services that they need related to COVID and to expand that and the improvements on those systems. Um, I'm gonna let Ellie Ray, if you don't mind, Ellie Ray from my staff worked with YWCA on this particular grant application. Uh, if you're with your permission, we'll, uh, I would like to turn over to Ellie Ray. She can talk a little bit more about the grant application. And also we have Jen Gursky, the executive director of the YWCA, uh, available for questions and to further explain the project. So who do you want to explain the project, Ms. Ray or Ms. Gursky? Well, I'm happy to add a little additional information to what uh, Director Haugen has already provided. Please. Okay. Um, so just for context, as has been mentioned, this, the purpose of this grant would to be was to make the uh, historic YWCA Helena building more resilient, um, both structurally and programmatically into the future so they can better respond to their clients in the community um, through the efforts to make these rehabilitation improvements um, to the actual physical structure and um, to allow them to provide more programmatic offerings within the confines predominantly as the basement that Sharon mentioned needs renovating. Um, the project is in total going to cost about 1.72 million. The request is for a little over one and a half million of CDBG CV funds from the State Department of Commerce. And that is what we, is before you tonight with the resolution. Um, and uh, as Sharon, Director Haugen mentioned, Jen Gersky, the Executive Director of YWCA Helena is present as are some of her board members to answer any more specific questions that you may have. Ms. Gersky, you have, do you have anything to add? I'd be happy to add some more components of the project. Thank you, Mayor Collins um, and Commission. Um, YWCA underwent a pretty significant renovation in 2015, which allowed it to bring up to code and standard some of the internal aspects of the building. Um, that included new plumbing, some of the most of the electrical um, and fire suppression system. It also created 24 residential rooms that had not been really touched in over a century. What was left to work on just because of shortage of funds um, was any exterior improvement or um, any touching of the basement to make it uh, be able to be utilized for services. In this plan, um, there are a couple of things to consider that um, Commerce has um, put through to us in their rulemaking that flow directly from um, CDBG in, at the federal level for CARES Act funding. Um, one of those federal guidelines is resiliency into the future. And so you'll see that climate and HVAC systems have been added into this grant. It's a hundred year old building still with weighted windows. Um, and then a major component is operable windows. <clears throat> a major component though of the project itself is the basement. We are proposing, we just moved um, all of our child activities off site to a new location at 600 North Park. We're very excited for that, which means the basement is now able to not only expand rooms, um, but have rooms A that can be um, closed to quarantine. Um, I truly think a pandemic is not going anywhere. And I think that that's what the science is showing us. So in the plans, it's two suites for a fully contained quarantine area. Um, or if a pandemic does go away, we can use that for emergency housing of um, families or women with children until we find a placement for them. Um, it also creates more space for direct client services and the wraparound care. So if you look at the CDBG CARES fund activities that are eligible, this is a directive from um, CDBG CARES Act funds from the feds, and it's improve and sustain public facilities. And so in the grant application, you'll see the resiliency measures, um, the improving of 
Um, <clears throat> I think I've discussed with city manager Harlow Shock about some of the bricks checking out from the wall um, exterior um, window improvements so they can be safe for women and children. So right now we're placing children in specific rooms where the windows are operable. Um, so the kids can't open the windows and not have safety aspects to a second story, third story, fourth story window. Um, you'll also see in their um, improvements to water flow and some, uh, some of the environmental factors for resilience. The second one is vital public services. Um, to my knowledge, we are the only state run um, or the state endorsed run facility that houses women um, from a point of homelessness with their children, no matter the age. So right now we have eight year olds, we have 12 year olds, we have an 11 year old boy. Um, we also don't determine that having a child is the determination of being housed at YWCA. So it's a quite unique program. 100% of the women and the kiddos that we serve um, actually fall at the extremely low income, which is a category that means you actually make less than the low income 30% of median income. So we definitely fulfill the vital public services. We are a 2.1 substance use disorder. So we are actually classified as a healthcare facility right now because of the services we offer. And we are working on the endorsement to become a mental health center for the children's services that we have just opened. And then we also meet the demographic and the population income requirements. The third um, criteria that was put out was to preserve and construct affordable housing and reduce homelessness. So um, it was pretty it was pretty direct in the um, rules and the call for proposals that you could either acquire an asset or fix the asset that you already had. Um, the, because the rapid nature of this rulemaking, um, commerce, I think initially put a 30 day turnaround for a whole public CDBG process. They then extended it, I think two or three weeks, which is why you're getting this now. But because of the quick turnaround and the nature of that, I think a lot of the asset um, acquisition component grants are not going to come through because you only have 30 days and you have to work with basically a commercial property. Um, this grant really was calling for shovel ready projects that could be turned. You have 36 months to spend it down. And really that timeline starts January of 2022. Um, so I, I guess I'll stop there. I have um, also some folks that from the board, um, we have an architect, Becky Lawson, who has worked on our project and really making sure that it was shovel ready and ready to be submitted to commerce. Um, we have our building committee chair, um, Kim Mangold, and our board president, Jessica Stewart Coons. Thank you, Ms. Gursky. Do we have any comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Mayor, I do have a couple questions. Please. Um, I'm curious. And forgive me if this was said at some point earlier. Um, if is there a possibility or any situation in which um, commerce would not fund the whole um, proposal and only part of it? Dr. Hogan, or uh, uh, um, Matt, uh, Mr. Um, excuse me, Mayor Collins, Commissioner Dean. That's always a possibility for commerce. I have seen them do it before. So I've seen them fund partial projects. And so yes, that, to answer your question directly, yes, that's always a possibility. Okay, thank you. Um, I know YWCA has obviously been working on these big projects for quite a while now, and I very much hope that the whole thing gets funded, but um, I hope something at least, if, if at the very least. Thank you. Manager Hollishaw. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to add that um, I believe the average award is around $500,000. Uh, so the potential is there. Um, that's been in the traditional program, but um, our hope is that we see more, uh, more towards this project since the need and the demand is so high and the low to moderate income weight is so significant. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Do you have any public comments, Madam Clerk? 
I do have a few hands raised, Mr. Mayor. The first I'd ask uh, to please state your full name. They're listed only as Gina. You have the floor, uh, Gina. This is Gina Lytle. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, I was wondering with this project, if an accessible um, parking spot is going to be made available at the YWCA. Currently, there isn't one. And they do provide parking, but no accessible parking. Thank you. And clerk. Mr. Mayor, next, uh, I have Becky Lawson. You have the floor, Becky. Hello, uh, Mayor and Commissioners. This is Becky Lawson. As Jen mentioned, I'm uh, um, on the board of directors for the YWCA and an architect here in Helena. And I would just like to speak to some of the questions that came up, if that's, if that's all right. Um, the oh, YWCA, is that yeah, all right? You gave your comments. The, the, this time is for you to give your comments. Okay, Whatever comments sorry, you thank have. you. Um, so I just would like to speak in support then of the YWCA uh, pursuing these funds for their building so that it can uh, continue to be used into the future and be more helpful to those in need. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lawson. Madam Clerk. Next, Mr. Mayor, I have Sonda Gaub. You have the floor, Ms. Gaub. Hi, thank you, Commission. Um, I just would like to, we didn't see any plans or anything, but um, I was wondering if these new um, renovated rooms would have individual environmental controls so that the um, units don't share the air quality just for COVID sake. So um, I was just wondering about those issues. And that's it. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, I have no other hands raised. I have no written public comment on this item. Oh, I spoke too soon. I apologize. I have one more hand raised, Jessica Stewart Coons. Do you have to flow, Ms. Coons? Hello, Mr. Mayor. My name is Jessica Stewart Coons. I am the board president of the YWCA. My pronouns are she and her. I am, uh, well, I would have liked if we could hear equal comments from both nonprofits, but that might be because I am partial to Jacob Kuntz as I am his wife. Um, it would have been nice to hear from both Jen and Jacob equally. That didn't happen. I will say though, I'm very excited about the project the YWCA is undertaking as the board president. Um, I am proud of the work the Y is doing and I know the work that that building continues to need as a historical beautiful building that serves incredible women and children as Jen said. So I just wanted to throw out my support and also say I wish that both of Jen and Jacob would have been able to speak equally. Thank you so much. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, I have no other hands raised. Uh, I have no written public comment online and no one in chambers here to make public comment. Thank you. At this time, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I will move to approve a resolution authorizing the city of Helena to apply for a community development block grant, CARES grant administered by the Montana Department of Commerce on behalf of the YWCA Helena and authorizing the city manager to execute any document necessary for the grant application and award. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any final comments? Madam Clerk. Commissioner Halliday. Aye. Commissioner Dean. Aye. Commissioner Logan. Aye. Commissioner O'Loughlin. Aye. Mayor Collins. Aye. The motion carries five to zero. Thank you. Presentation, update on the ADA trail project on Mount Helena. Manager Hall Schalk, Director Pinozo, and Manager Lance Satter. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioners. And first, I'll, I wanna do a quick introduction and uh, first uh, 
want to thank uh, Ken Eden, one of our residents, Dr. Ken Eden. He uh, had an opportunity uh, to take a walk with me on the trail and talk me through the project from his point of view. This was over a week and a half ago, I believe, almost a week, <laughs> 10 days. Time flies quickly. And um, having his time and seeing what he saw, I understood uh, what I needed to ask our team. And um, I agreed then, and I still agree, that um, what information had been provided uh, to the community on a, a picture in a highlighted yellow line is not what is being installed. Uh, I also agreed with Mr. Eden that the change, change seemed very different from the picture with the highlighted yellow line that was agreed on. Now, that line was an idea as I returned to the team and asked them to tell me how they reached the determination that the change was uh, enough not to uh, let myself or the commission know. And this detail, the commission will hear from Director Pinozo and is available within the memorandum. The ongoing emails and concerns coupled, coupled with the current state of COVID at the time were the reason that I stopped the staff. I was concerned of their safety. Now, I, I understand um, many people were unfairly um, identified as being those responsible for some fear in, my, in the team. I just think it's really important to be really clear that when I shared to the press that I had to ask the team to, to stop work, that decision was coupled with COVID and a, a variety of things going on in our community. And I think it's really important that we all have a moment to understand that a pandemic is still going on. And sometimes things that are written aren't always related. And sometimes even the headlines uh, that result are, aren't the same. So I want everyone in the community to understand that I had written to the press that adding COVID and its current state in our community, and I'm going to err on the side of caution for our team. So that weekend we had had all of our hospital beds filled. I'd also been talking with the team and observing an increase in, in concern and frustration and anger citywide, which I believe is part of a larger transition of our community through the impacts of COVID. The weeks up to this incident, I had been working with neighbors threatening to sue each other over parking spots. Citizens working with neighborhoods uh, threatening uh, and with worry over liens on their properties. Increasing safety precautions in our teams and a serious accident on Rodney, along with multi-unit uh, multi fires. And I thought it was fair to just say, hey, maybe we can just take a little moment and breathe and listen to each other for a minute. So I don't need to spell everything out now on how I arrived at what will slow the team down. And, and at the same time, I believe um, it fair to say I appreciate everyone who has said, hey, this isn't what we had talked about. And why did it happen this way? Uh, my hope is that the community can understand that we are still in a state of pandemic and it's okay for us to take a step back and talk as a community, work together. Um, right now, I'll uh, turn it over to Director Pernozo, who uh, has, her present, has her presentation ready along with the Open Lands team. Um, I do have some closing comments, which include some ideas on what you as a commission may want to contemplate by way of policy. Again, this is a presentation and there's no recommended motion. Thank you, Director Pinozo. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Director Pinozo, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor and City Manager Schalk. Um, I am just gonna uh, go through, uh, sorry, my name is Christy Pinozo. I'm the Parks and Recreation Director for the city. I am going to go through the memo that is included in your um, packet as well. Um, I'll try to go over it at a, at a pretty high level because some of these issues we've already discussed, but I wanna give a little bit of background on the trail that we're constructing up on Mount Helena. Um, the trail work, uh, the construction work began uh, this spring, 2021 for this uh, Americans with Disability Act accessible trail. It was one of seven projects that was approved through the Helena Open Lands Management Plan annual projects process. Uh, last year was the first year that we implemented that process. Um, our work on that project slowed this summer uh, due to weather and limited availability of materials. And um, 
and then uh, was stopped uh, last week, um, as city manager Harlow Schulk explained. Um, and then we talked about it at our last administrative meeting um, and used it as an example as we were lining out our new communications plan and engagement process. This project was chosen because of its timely presentation um, for the commission. Um, the project originally was proposed in 2019 by Helena Rotary, who presented the concept to the Helena Open Lands Management Advisory Committee and city staff and the city's ADA advisory board. Uh, the project was then presented by Rotary at the 2020 Open Lands Major Projects Meeting, and it was brought through that process, that public involvement process that included uh, comment periods and multiple public meetings uh, before it was finally brought to the commission for approval. I want to go a little bit into um, our Helena Open Lands Management Plan Recreation Chapter that we revised um, in 2019 and 2020. Um, the first goal of that um, plan uh, is to provide safe and accessible recreation opportunities for all users. And the guiding principles under that were to ensure opportunities for all users to access Helena Open Lands, maintain current levels of trail access, and look for opportunities to expand access in sections of existing trails as well as in new trail construction to strive for a balance of providing multiple access points with concentrating access in specific areas to reduce public resource and user impacts and expand ADA access across the Helena open lands and meet ADA access requirements in all new infrastructure. And that is one of the goals that we look at um, and this project fit under. Um, not only did this project implement a goal of that plan, it also fulfilled a previous recreation objective that was in our um, open lands plan, our 2004, 2004 adopted open lands plan to provide an ADA accessible trail on the east side of, or um, on Mount, in the Mount Helena City Park. Um, we do currently have one ADA accessible trail on Helena open lands. And that is on the east side of town at the, it's not the golf course, I apologize. There's a typo there. It's the, the Falf course, the Frisbee golf course. Um, up until a couple weeks ago, all the comments and feedback that we had received uh, while we were constructing it and throughout the public process had been very supportive and complimentary of the project. Um, there have been quite a few questions and concerns raised as of late. Uh, one of those questions has been about the trails ADA compliance. Um, and it's important to note that federal ADA standards provide guidelines to help that ensure a trail is more accessible to individuals with uh, limitations, mobility limitations. Um, and the trail is being built with an overall grade of approximately five to 6%. Um, the ADA guidelines that we're using to develop the trail are that um, for slope, you can have zero to 5% slopes for any distance. Um, you can have six to 8% slopes for 50 feet of run with an interrupted five foot resting section. You can have nine to 10% slopes. Now, uh, this project doesn't have any slopes that are of that um, grade, um, but you can have nine to 10% slopes and meet the guidelines for 30 feet of run and even 11 to 14% slopes for five feet of run. The complete trail would, will be roughly one half mile in length. Um, ADA guideline, guidelines recommend a minimum width of 36 inches to accommodate a single wheelchair. Uh, and it, this trail is being developed 60 to 80 inches to allow two wheelchairs to pass at any point on the path. The current development does not represent the final width of the trail uh, as work will be done to narrow or seed in along the sides of the trail. The original proposal uh, had a conceptual map that was presented by Helena Rotary that proposed a 2% slope goal. When construction began in the spring, it was determined that the entirety of the proposed alignment would not be possible. It would not be possible to maintain a 2% slope on that contour, nor would the terminus area be able to have an ADA accessible seating or viewing area. Um, so minor mod modifications to the alignment of the trail uh, had to be made to reduce some of the slope and infrastructure needs, reduce the length of the trail, reduce the visual impact and modify the endpoint to avoid an area that was too rocky to develop. 
Um, we use the, uh, we did consult with Rotary, um, the open lands uh, folks consulted me, the director, and we determined that was a minor, minor modification, not requiring further approval based on factors of it didn't change the purpose of the trail or the project, the location of the project, such as a different draw or drainage or trailhead or different area of open lands did not change. There were no change, there were no changes to the length of the trail, um, more than one ha half mile. Uh, the length of the trail actually shortened about 0.10 miles. Um, changes that were not, the changes were acceptable to uh, the project proponent, Rotary, we consulted them. There were no changes that ne negatively impact the environmental, wildlife, or visual character of the trail or project. Um, and there were no changes that increased it increase the infrastructure or impact of construction and no changes that increase the cost or duration of the construction of the project, more than $25,000 or more than one year. Um, the construction route and the minor modifications were shared with HOMAC at the June 2020 HOMAC meeting, uh, which included a walk of that trail as it was flagged off. And we also provided social media updates as well um, on trail development. Um, the Parks Department recently did share a proposal through our 2021 Helena Open Lands Major Projects process um, that proposed to extend that trail to meet up with the LeGrand Cannon Trail. Um, we were referring to that as phase two. Um, and that presentation was of the second phase was only a preliminary proposal and there are no, currently no formal plans for additional development. So we talked a little bit about the, I talked a little bit about the city commission established its policies for Helena's open lands as described in the visions and goals in the open lands plan, chapter seven. Um, the public involvement process of this plan is outlined in appendix P. Um, we talked about that at our, um, at our meeting last week. And so I wanna talk a little bit about um, some of the lessons learned. Um, because this is a new process for us, I think it's important to sort of outline some areas that could be improved. I think it's very important for us to communicate the conceptual nature of these proposed processes. These are not as built designs. All the projects that go through our public, our public major lands process for involvement, for public involvement are very conceptual in nature. Um, implementing our new communications plan, I think it's important to communicate out to the public even minor changes to uh, and modifications to these major projects. Um, and that is something we need to implement and do more fully. Um, and also include in this chapter, in the appendix, the determining factors that we use to determine whether it's a minor or major project. So, you know, while it's clear that this project meets the policies adopted by the Commission for the Recreation and Open Lands Plan, the agreement on the outcome, feasibility and design work needs, uh, needs further work on future fraud projects before adoption by the Commission. Um, additionally, changes during the development phase need shared when they are significant or when uh, even if they are minor um, and need to be communicated out fully. Um, so that that's all I have. I will stop there and um, turn it back Thank over. You. Yeah. Thank you, Director. I was just going um, yeah, to add. Your comments? Yes, I do. Thank you. So uh, like I shared at uh, the beginning, I was uh, want to just point out just a couple of policy items to think over. Um, these are the implementation based on uh, conceptual. And I, I think um, in listening and reading comments, words that uh, are used are really important by advocates and they're intended to grab attention. And, and I think there's that's where we, um, I, I would recommend that the commission really think about the words because uh, I'll use the word bulldozer, as you know, we share in this document, the use of the word is um, bulldozer is um, not, not the same as skid steer. It's a smaller piece of equipment. And that word is important because 
it's used to highlight what the problem is and it it's not a passive construction so we're using a motorized piece of equipment for construction on a trail and and the second part of that is why is that motorized item being used at all so just some things to think about um, motorized vehicles overall are something very much of concern in our community e-bikes have been a part of those conversations. So that's a policy, that's a city code conversation. Um, first, uh, also permission, uh, permissible construction activities on these two mountains on the Southern Hills. Uh, what is construction? Is it only passive and nothing motorized? Sub, uh, section 712.4 allows for construction on Mount Helena for ADA trails along with maintenance and improvement. Is what occurred too much? That's a policy issue and something that the commission could contemplate a revision to in city code. Um, there are no other specific outdoor accessibility standards adopted under ADA for outdoor recreation. We were using guidelines. Do we need, we need to be more clear that those are actually going to be adopted as a regu regulation. So we had been using the words uh, compliance and determinations. Those are, those are around laws and in this case it would guidance. And then uh, last, balance between latitude and flexibility within reasonable expectations. We identified and Christy identified the need for more feasibility study and design work before a commission adoption as well when changes are significant. So you know what to expect from us on the implementation side. On the actual policy side, contemplate Revisions to the recreation plan section to be more strict is what is a minor change? Is that definition wrong by the team? And if it is, that's a policy question you can help us define. Is it a new cut as um, has been described into the hill? If it is, that's a policy question. Add that to the city code. And then last, um, last week we shared the new communications plan and engagement program. These are new programs to the city and they are intended to result in consistency. This will not ever stop though, the need for our community to talk to each other and ask each other questions and engage those who are trusted voices in the community. Um, is the commission's city counts, uh, city county parks board, this group is HOMAC, this group is the Helena Citizens Commission Council, excuse me, Helena Citizens Council, that group, is the Citizens Conservation Board, that group? Who are all of these groups to the commission and what is their purpose? Those are policy questions. We need a group of citizens, again, trusted, who can be resources to help citizens truth find when they may not trust us. And then last, perhaps the greatest issue of all this conversation is the disconnection of the commission's policy of accessibility, which the team was focused on compared to the balance with conservation and preservation. What does that mean? Tell us what we have. Um, we have just showed you what our experts believe that looks like. Is that wrong? If it is, you can interpret that and then tell us how to best guide. So that's what we hope you can help us with through policy. Uh, thank you for your um, this evening's presentation time, Mayor and Commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, Director Pinozo, Manager Holloshaw. Uh, do we have comments from the commission? I see Commissioner Lachlan hand is raised. You have the floor, Commissioner. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so this is a question perhaps for the city manager or for Director Pinozo. Um, could you just could you just share what is the expected timeline for completion of the project? Thank you, Commissioner. I'll also turn it over to Director Pinozo and her team. Director Pinozo, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Collins, um, Commissioner O'Laughlin. Uh, we expect to uh, take about two more weeks uh, for construction with heavy equipment. Uh, we can finish the rest um, potentially before the snow flies um, with hand tools after that. So we're looking at approximately two weeks um, potentially in another couple weeks after that with hand tools. Thank you. Any other comments from the commission? Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Commissioner. I have um, two questions. Um, my first one is, and I, I 
don't recall seeing this included um, in chapter seven, but I'm curious if it's somewhere else. Um, do we have a requirement for a historic review um, for open lands projects? Eric de Pinoza. Mayor, if I may. Um, I just last week was speaking with our um, city administrator or the county administrator, Roger. Um, and we spoke about the importance of the historic team and the role of advising the community and the expected, uh, when we're expecting to work within the city of Helena's um, specific districts. It is not a requirement. It's an, a location of um, advice to the city. It's not a requirement. Okay, thank you. Um, and then my second question is, um, I'm wondering what, I know that you talked a little bit about um, that, that there was not um, significant environmental impact or changes that negatively impact the environmental character, et cetera. Um, I'm just, when, when we start planning for these projects and, and going through the process, what type of environmental impact review do we consider? And I guess, is that consistent with, for example, what we would ask for, for a, a private project? Thank you, Commissioner and Mayor. The project was uh, budgeted at $26,000, as I understand it. Ultimately, it's around $7,000. As far as large um, investments in environmental um, assessments, that is a part of the process itself. And I'll uh, direct, uh, ask Director Pinoza to provide more specific detail. Um, City Manager heller Shulk and um, Commissioner Dean, for all of the major projects that we take through the process, we do what is called a um, project assessment that looks a little bit like an environmental assessment where we look at impacts to um, wildlife, impacts to soil, um, visual impacts, um, and all the projects have that this project did as well. Thank you. Do we have any other comments from the commission? All right. Um, Mr. Mayor, maybe that. just a quick one. Okay, um, go ahead, for Ms. Pinozo. So um, sort of appreciate the, the, his, the history of it. I will say that when I've spoken to people about this project, um, I've been pretty emphatic that I think you all did a pretty darn good job last year at this time um, implementing a new public process in the wake of some um, pretty divisive projects, many of which you inherited and that the commission said, try to figure out how we're going to push past um, you know, the, the same mistakes that we were seeing sort of over and over again. I think you guys did, um, I think you did a good job. I think it was a first try. I think that I can defend that process when I talk to people. I think there's always room for improvement and I appreciate that sort of look on it. Um, and I appreciate the information on this project. I think we may you know, have, disagreements as to what's significant or not significant, but I'm sort of like, who cares? The trail's in there today. Um, and I think it's probably a net positive in the long run. Um, I hope we'll keep looking for ways that we work on those, um, on this process. But I guess trying not to draw us too far off base here, given your thoughts on um, check-ins and implementation discussions, is there anything out there today in terms of this year's plan, right? So the stuff that was approved last December that you or you think the commission should be looking at and thinking about right before the next cut, whether it's a hand tool or a bulldozer um, so that we aren't back here in a month, we aren't dragging this commission back here in February, in March. Um, is there anything out there on the horizon that could merit even an administrative check-in um, so as to uh, diffuse some of the sort of language and discussion that we saw happening over this so quickly. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Um, no, I guess that was a question from Ms. Pinozo. Is there anything out there? 
Eric DePinoza or Manager Holoshock? Thank you. I think it's fair to pr provide a, a good summary in return um, from the, the director and the team. And But if she has something off the top of her head, I would definitely like her to be able to answer. Yes. Um, Commissioner Holliday, I think we will be reviewing all of our projects. Um, the one that comes to mind initially is installation of uh, an ADA accessible um, bathroom facility, a pit toilet at the old shooting range trailhead that went through the major projects process and was approved by the commission. It has not been installed yet because we had not received the funding yet. Um, we received word, I believe last week, that uh, we uh, did receive, we will receive grant funding for that. So that's something that we, um, I think, can bring back through and um, talk about and use the lessons learned and implement how we might approach that. Good, thank you. Thank you. Are you done? Okay. At this time, we'll, uh, we will be opening to public comments, but I would like to read a, a statement. In order to maintain decorum, I will ask you to abide by a few meeting guidelines. We understand the topic is emotional for many. However, I ask you to be respectful of the commission, the panelists, and all participants. Any use of profanity or hostile language is unacceptable. You'll be asked to refrain from using any such language or will be removed from the webinar. Further, I ask you to be respectful of the many who wish to speak on the topic. If you would like to provide public commentary, you may do so either by typing in the Q&A feature or by raising your hand. If you are participating by phone, you may raise your hand by pressing star nine and mute or unmute yourself using star six. You'll be called upon to speak by myself or the clerk of the commission in order. Please keep your comments brief. You will have two minutes exactly to speak. The city of Helena is committed to accepting all public commentary and questions posed during this discussion. However, addressing every statement during the meeting may not occur. Please note all public comments and questions posed during the meeting will go on the permanent record. We thank you for participating in this forum and appreciate your comments and patience as we navigate the change in platform. Thank you. At this time, I open up the floor for public comments and I want to first welcome my friend, Jack Roscoe. Jack, you have any comments you wanna provide? Please, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. My name is Jack Rusco. I'm a C5 quadriplegic as a result of a snowboarding accident. I live in Whitehall and I represent Montana Independent Living Project. I think the ADA accessible trails, both on Mount Helena and Davis Gulch, are a wonderful and great addition to our community. I personally miss having the access into the outdoors, but however, with this project, I would like to see this crushed gravel compacted and tested out with both manual and electric wheelchairs on a 2% or more grade slope. I am concerned with the potential washout and want to figure out a solution to divert any heavy rain, off, rain runoff. I am concerned with seeing the construction and funding take place and it not to be accessible to all. I tested out this trail Tuesday, September 28th with Vince Pickles, who is an electric wheelchair user as well. And he is a, uh, in a wheelchair as a result of a stroke. We both wanted to see how our electric wheelchairs would perform. Unfortunately, both of our chairs were stuck multiple times in the crushed granite sand. If we compact the granite on the steepest slope for roughly 100 feet or so, we can then test the chairs out and see how well they perform. I know this trail will be great for adaptive equipment, but want to make sure it's accessible for all in chairs. I do plan Tuesday to go out and test a similar crushed granite path by Fort Harrison. Um, I don't want any of the local feel, uh, local community to feel like this is a waste of funds and time. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Jack. Madam Clerk, do we have any other public comments? 
Mr. Mayor, commissioners, uh, the next hand I have raised in the queue is Pamela Tardo. You have the floor, Mr. Tardo. Hello, um, commissioners and mayor. Uh, my name is Pam Tardo, and I am the Historic Preservation Officer for the city and county. And I just wanted to comment on Commissioner Dean's question um, whether historic preservation consultation is required. And it is required for any um, anything that's listed on the National Register. If there is a permit pulled, that will um, trigger uh, through the National Register um, a consultation. So generally, if there are any changes, which Mount Helena is a historic district, so any, any proposed changes would have to go through the Heritage Tourism Council because um, Mount Helena has a, is a former uh, Native American hunting ground. There are ar archeological concerns. There's also man-made features such as the water line, lime kilns, the quarry, um, prospecting pits. So to just answer your question, there, there is, um, a required consultation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tarda. Next, we have you step up. Please call your name and. Mr. Mayor, distinguished commissioners, good evening. My name is Jennifer Hensley, H E N S L E Y. I'm a citizen of Helena. Thank you for your continued attention and energy given to making our community a remarkable place to live, work, and raise a family. Every day I grow more proud to tell people I live in Helena. One of my biggest loves of this town is our city trail system. I live on Flowery Street at the base of the mountain, just one block from the Tubbs Trailhead. I'm on the trails most days, either with my son, my dog, or just by myself. I see friends and neighbors all over the trails and it's an unmatched gift to be able to use them. I'm blessed to look at Mount Helena from my back deck and I smile every time I see a runner or a dog on the trails visit visible from my house. Because I believe in pulling your own weight, my son and I are also Prickly Pear Land Trust volunteers showing up to help reclaim widened trails and block game trails that humans have tried to make their own to the detriment of the rest of the system. I'm in full and complete support of the new ADA trail being constructed on Mount Helena. I've walked it, I'm thrilled with it. The argument that this trail will ruin the integrity of the mountain or scatter the hill or disrupt wildlife is without merit. Mount Helena is not a wilderness area. It's wilder than Women's Park, to be sure, but for people to speak of it as a protected refuge of the wild simply is a false narrative. I've been in the wilderness, hiked miles back where the vast majority of humans cannot and do not go. I would fight tooth and nail and quite frankly do to preserve true wilderness and wild public lands in this state. My friends who have mobility issues will never get to witness that spectacle of perfection in person. But the Mount Helena hiking system isn't that. It's a web of human constructed and maintained, marked, mapped, and heavily used trails. I find it disingenuous for folks to be just fine with those types of trails, but not one short section being ADA accessible. For the access to this beautiful recreational area to be blocked, to those not able to navigate the skinny trails is quite frankly mean. It's not welcoming, it's not reasonable, and it's contrary to what our community is. Again, thank you for your open minds and hearts on this issue. Thank you, Ms. Hensler. Madam Clerk. Online, uh, Mr. Mayor, next I have Noreen Freestad. You have the floor, Noreen. Noreen. Hello. Um, I have most recently, this I'm Noreen Freestad. I've most recently served on the DePord Trail Working Group, advocating for trail improvements and mitigations to restore resource damage, as well as advocating for a universal access trail for the upper 1600 feet of DeFord Trail. Um, as it's already been clarified by, um, I think by, by Rachel, um, in particular, the, the misnomer of, of there's really nothing that exists as an ADA accessible trail. I'm not gonna rehash any of that, um, but I am, I was very pleased to hear Jackson weigh in uh, because I walked the trail um, and, I'm the mother of a 32 year old woman with cerebral palsy who walks independently with a crutch. And as I walked that trail, it was very clear that this was not accessible to someone like Caroline. Um, it, is, it is too steep and the surface has got so much crushed gravel on it uh, that yeah, as, as Jackson said, it's going to wash off. It's going to be a nightmare. 
Um, and so it really is not a surface that is friendly to someone who drags one foot and does not walk, you know, by picking up both feet. So I think that, you know, more consideration of that surface area is really needed for sure. Um, I cannot approach, and I couldn't in any way imagine it being appropriate for wheelchairs. So I was also glad to hear that someone's tested that out and, and identified that those are some problems that need to be looked at. The main point that I want to um, talk about is that members of the disability community were not involved in this at the beginning. And that seems to me to be a big mistake. Um, on the DeFord Working Group, we have brought in um, members of the disability community, both sensory impaired and mobility impaired people. And, and we ought to be doing that more. I mean, we shouldn't, as those of us that have full facility of our of our limbs, um, we can't make assumptions without involving these people right from the get go. So I would really encourage that we do that at this point in terms of the, the remaining, you know, the finishing of this trail. Um, another point of grave concern to me is that there's no discussion of this trail um, where it would be just for walkers and members of the mobility community. Um, unless bicycles are excluded from using this trail, it will never be a trail that the mobility and sensory challenge community will be able to confidently and safely use. Um, as we found out in the outreach to the mobility sensory community, uh, challenge community throughout the DeFord Trail process, what is really needed is a quiet trail experience, which is what we were advocating for at that south end of um, DeFord Trail, which was unfortunately by consensus voted down by the, by the working group. Um, Lisa Bay and I were the dissenting people. We submitted a minority report and we still are advocating for you know, more, more consideration of, of rerouting bikes to Davis Gulch um, so that this could be. And I feel the same way about this Mount Helena trail. I feel like putting another trail in is wide. Is that, do I need to wrap up? Please. Okay, so um, I just applaud the well-meaning attempts to, to provide a trail experience that would be appropriate for mobility impaired visual, um, individuals, but um, I feel like that input from the community is, is needed now to make a final decision on how this is going to go forward from this point. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, just want to remind the community that we did receive a lot of uh, emails and all of those emails have been placed into public records. So um, if you're going to be reading those emails again, you know, I don't think that's a wise idea because uh, we already have them in public record. So do you have any others? Mr. Mayor, next up online with their hand raised is Gina. Um, I believe it's Gina Lytle. You have the floor, Gina. Hi, this is Gina Lytle. I grew up in Helena and um, I've been a wheelchair user for over 30 years. And I have to say that I'm incredibly pleased that the city is making ADA accessible trails on Mount Helena and that I look forward to trying this out in a couple of weeks when the surface has been cured and ready for mobility devices. And I just wanna say that I think it's important to know that this is a temporary thing. Um, just getting the access in there, but this is something that will last a lifetime. And I think having the ADA been in effect for over 30 years, and this is only the second ADA accessible trail within the open lands. I think that's wonderful. I wanna say that I was out at Spring Meadow Park Lake um, recently and went around the whole trail there that was developed by our state parks and the prickly pear open lands. And I was able to navigate that with my manual wheelchair and a little motor underneath. And I wanna encourage the use of bicycles and mobility devices. We're not quiet, we make noise um, going through that. And I think that this has an opportunity to 
be a worthwhile experience for people of all abilities and sensory things. So thank you and thank you for including me in this process. And I look forward to trying out this trail and giving feedback to the city of Helena. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The next hand I have raised online, Mr. Mayor, is an individual listed only as Jacob. And I'd ask Jacob to please state their full name. You have the flu. Jacob, you have the floor. We'll come back to Jacob. Hi, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had to unmute myself after I raised my hand. Uh, can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, my name is Jacob Krisovich. I'm very happy to hear other people from the disabled community on here. Um, I just wanted I just wanted to let people know I am a um, outdoor enthusiast who happens to be blind, and I'm very excited about this trail. I'm an avid backpacker, and I go up trails that aren't um, ADA compliant. And doing something like this with my family is very appealing to me. And I just wanted people to keep in mind that with, for instance, um, Jack or Jackson's comments, um, I apologize. Um, I can't remember which, which one your name was, but I would like to just reiterate that at no point did he state that the grade was too much. He just stated that the compensation, 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 <laughs> I can't speak. The material of the trail uh, needed to be compacted. And one thing I just want to remind people is that not, not to speak on our behalf because a challenge like that of just a 5% grade can be welcomed by people in our community. Um, there's places like Spring Meadow where the trail is flat and things, but we don't have an option like this where we can go for a hike where you're earning it. And it's a sense of accomplishment and such. And um, the other thing I would just keep people in mind that one of the previous presenters mentioned is that this trail is a work in progress. The construction of the trail isn't even completed yet. So um, I just wanna say I'm very much in favor of this trail. And I just wanna thank you so much to the Rotary Club, the Helena Rotary Club and the city of Helena for doing something for the disabled community in this app in this regard. That's all I have. Thank you. Madam Clerk. The next hand I have raised uh, online, Mr. Mayor, is Joel Peden. You have to flow, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the commission. Uh, for the record, my name is Joel Peden, and uh, I am a person with a disability. Um, I have a physical disability as well as a visual disability, as well as uh, behavioral health, mental health. Uh, so I kind of, I, I, I kind of figure that I've I've hit the trifecta in life. Um, I want to echo number one that the outlook from the from the city and from the parks department to work on accessibility and how to uh, include people with disabilities and give them the opportunity to participate in the outdoors is greatly appreciated. Um, <clears throat> listening to the presentation and to the comments, um, I find it interesting that uh, on a number of different areas, there was talk about you know, experts and trusted sources within the community. And not one of those comments mentioned people in the disability community, people with disabilities that uh, can also fill those roles as, as experts and trusted sources. And what I found over my years uh, in doing disability advocacy work is that the sooner you involve people, not waiting until decisions have been pretty much made and then bringing them in looking for a stamp of approval, but having them involved at the front end in those planning, it's not that we're smarter 
than what I call a tab, who's a temporarily able-bodied person, right? Because either you have a disability or you're temporarily able-bodied. Tabs mean well, and they have good intention, but they don't bring the perspective that those of us that live with a disability and live with various disabilities can bring to the discussion. And yeah, you know, a 7% grade doesn't sound bad. My question is, um, you know, people talk about having gold out, you know, gone out and walked the trail. Has, has any tab gone out with a manual wheelchair and tried to roll the trail? That'll give you an entirely different perspective on, on, what's, uh, on what should be acceptable and what should be improved on. My other comment is, is I often hear in my work that, oh, it meets the guidelines of the ADA or of, uh, of another document that outlines uh, suggestions. I respond to that by saying, that's the minimum that we can do. That's the, that's the minimum. That's the worst that we can do as a community is to meet those guidelines. I want my community to be exceeding those guidelines and taking into account other things as well and making sure that when we talk about accessibility, it's not just physical accessibility, but it does take into account somebody with mental health, somebody with dementia, uh, you know, all those disabilities that are, that are combined, whether they have an intellectual disability it's not it's not easy it's difficult i'll admit it the ada Can you start wrapping up please sir sure the ada is very vague but I, I think that's why it's important to include uh you know 18 to 20 percent of the population and representatives from that population that represent montanans with a disability thank you and um, i do appreciate the project thank you Madam Clerk. Next up, Mr. Mayor, I have Chantal Schieffer. You have the floor, Chantal. Thank you very much. Thank you for hosting this conversation today and thank you for your service to Helena. I know that leadership is hard and I'm grateful for all that you do. Um, I am a parent of a boy with multiple physical and cognitive disabilities. When he was born, we were told that he may never walk. He is now nine and through years of therapy and rock solid determination, he, is, he started walking independently when he was five years old. His name is Dax and he is a third grader at Hawthorne Elementary. We live at the base of Mount Helena and we are avid trail users. Although Dax struggles to navigate the single track hiking trails and we generally opt to drive to La Grande or 10 mile for our recreation. When I first learned in January of 2020 that the Rotary was proposing an ADA trail on Mount Helena, we were all thrilled. Finally, we would be able to navigate our favorite place together as a family. Last week, my son and I hiked the trail uh, that's under construction, and I later learned that there was strong opposition to the trail. While I understand that folks felt in the dark on the development and that the process um, contained flaws, I totally get that. But after two years of development, including extensive public comment, to stop this project now is short-sighted and would be giving in to a small group of opponents rather than to countless potential users of this trail. There are improvements to be made, to be sure. This conversation has risen to, risen to a level that includes wide and deep support for this trail and more trails like it. You have received those messages via email and many are here tonight. Please listen to those voices and finish this trail so we can all enjoy it together. As we say in our family, let's get after it. Yesterday, my husband, my son and I hiked the trail and my son asked why the builders stopped working. We explained as best as we could that the project had hit some snags. And he said, when the road gets rough, you keep going. Indeed, this road has been rough uh, as of late, but let's keep going. Let's show Helena and all of Montana that ours is a community that promotes and embraces inclusivity. Thank you. 
Thank you. Madam Clerk. Next, uh, with their hand raised online, I have Ken Eden. You have to flow, Ken. Um, you know, one problem with uh, writing up your uh, comments before you start to speak is that um, what you hear influences what you say. So I'm gonna start at the very last um, paragraph of my two minutes say going forward after phase one is what most of the people who have commented negatively on the process that was applied to phase one will not be applied to phase two. Phase two, and that hasn't been mentioned by any speaker, if they did, I missed it, is a scar across the front of Mount Helena that will be visible from multiple locations is going to require much more than the estimated uh, uh, tab. And uh, in many cases is going to encourage either spider trails up and down the hill, or that will be where the next enduro race in Helena is run. So I would just plead that the commission do a much wider job of gathering community input on phase two. I was involved in delivering a vision of a trail that would encircle Helena in 1995 to the Helena Improvement Society, now evolved into the um, uh, yeah, well, uh, you know the society uh, or the uh, hometown Helena, I guess, is the name of it now. And that circular path, the first part of which was La Grande, where we live. Um, and we walk the mountain. We don't walk that trail very often, but it's a five mile round trip already in place with two ends of it. Uh, closed off to cars and motorbikes. That should be emphasized more. The only label on any trail that I have seen in Helena, including Memorial Park and others, where ADA is displayed, is at the end of the trail that we're talking about. ADA trail, caution. And I think that unintended connection is a very important one. I think we're gonna learn a lot about doing more trails on Mount Helena accessible to the disabled if we learn that they don't work in this type of an environment. I think we should do a lot more to improve the experience on the Legrand Trail, all five miles of it. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, next online, I have Sandagup. You have the floor, Ms. Gop. Hello, Commission. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for us as Helena to um, really go beyond just the minimum guidelines. And um, last week, right after the meeting, I went straight to the, I drug my husband up there and we went straight to the trail. I was like, I didn't know they were even making this. So um, I was really excited because um, I think it's a, it, it creates great views up there. Um, please finish it before the snow flies. I'm sorry, you were unable to, you, you pulled out of it. It was, it's a kind of exciting. Um, um, there's a few things that need to be tweaked so it can be ADA uh, accessible. And um, I didn't know if, I don't know the whole plan, but um, the coley wash really needs to be addressed. Um, there needs to be a bridge or something because I just see that to be washed out within two or three years. Um, other things that I saw were, um, there's a few places that you need to start that needs to be flattened out so there can be breaks in between. And so if a wheelchair does get out of control, they do have time to readjust. Um, there needs to be a lot of things, but I think it's exciting. And um, 
it'll make a great view. I don't know if they'll be completely ADA accessible and um, just because of the slopes on both sides. So if you lose control of your wheelchair, you're going down the mountain and it's going to be a really fun ride. So I don't know if there needs to be a bumper or something, but um, those are things that I'm just bringing forth to you guys. And um, this is really exciting. And um, I hope to, uh, this is going to be, this will be great for Helena. And thanks for your time. Thank you, Ms. Gubb. Madam Clerk. Next online, I have Tony Jewett. You have the floor, Mr. Jewett. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great, thank you, um, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Um, I would wager that everybody who's on the phone uh, tonight is in favor of providing uh, increased access for impaired people. And yet this discussion seems to be breaking down into if you're for or against that. And I think that's, we're having the wrong discussion. What concerns me is the fact that the trail that is there now is not the trail that was supposed to be built and that was approved by the commission back in the fall of 2020. What concerns me is that it appears that city staff have come up with a definition of what is a minor modification versus a major modification. I've never seen that before. I was a part of the conversation uh, on major projects last year. And the project that I see now is not the project that was brought before me uh, back then. And so I have to ask myself, um, is this a transparent way of going about the business of treating our open space lands? The justification for doing the trail, as I heard it, was that it's to provide access, and I'm all for providing access. But that's one goal of five that is, that is in the Section 7 rewrite. An equal goal is stewardship of our lands. And what's happened so far is that the trail that was built is not well stewarded for the lands that are there. I was heartened by the uh, city manager's comment that the commission has a policy question in front of it, which is that how do you provide accessibility and balance with stewardship? And I strongly suggest the commission begin to have that conversation because over the past three years, what I've witnessed is I've been involved in Helena's, Helena's Trails work is I've been involved in the directional trail, which occurred with very little public input and the final outcome of that trail was not what was originally proposed. I was involved in the conversation around Beatty Street Trailhead, which embroiled this community in controversy and emotion for months on end. A bridge was built on aftershock with little to no public input. I agree with Commissioner Halliday that we have tried to take advan advances on the question of public input. However, I would remind the commission that the public input process that was, that was eventually adopted um, simply did not have all the things that many of us advocated for. And one of them was a much broader outreach to, to the public that was being affected by the decisions that were being made. I would urge the commission to look seriously at whether or not it wants to take on another three and a half miles of a trail that is, that is 300 feet above what was proposed a year ago and extending it another three miles across the face of Mount Helena. I suggest strongly to the commission that it reject that major project and stop it now until this public input process is um, made more functional. If the public process was working, you wouldn't have this uproar that in front of you right now, frankly. And it's time to really look at why there is the repetitive pattern of having these things happen over and over again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Thank you, Mr. Jewett. Madam Clerk. Next online with their hand raised, I have Jessica Fisher. You have the floor, Ms. Fisher. 
Hi, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. Um, I am a special education teacher in Helena School District. I've been in the district for 10 years. Um, I actually had the great fortune of meeting Jack when he was in eighth grade. And I'm so impressed with his willingness to come and speak today. Um, I'm just um, speaking probably obviously in strong support of the trails. I was so proud to hear that Helena was attending to our people with disabilities and making trails accessible for them. So um, I just want to speak in strong advocacy for that and just really true to at the same time encourage you to seek out some advice and support from those people in wheelchairs like Jack um, and make sure that we're doing something that is going to be accessible for everybody. Um, thank you for thinking of our Helena community. And I just, this town is such an amazing town to be a part of. And it's a town that welcomes everyone. And I just think this is just another step in that process, process of making our beautiful wildlands accessible to everyone. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fisher. Madam Clerk. Mr. Mayor, I have no other hands raised online. I do hope I spoke a little too soon. Uh, I will read one written public comment into the record if I could, please. Please. From Jelena Godin Collins, I apologize if I did not pronounce that correctly. Uh, asking Director Pinozo, do the minor changes affect annual trail erosion? Does your team have opportunities for volunteers to improve environmental impacts as needed in the future? Next, with their hand raised, I have Tony Zemet. Go ahead, Tony. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and members of the commission. My name uh, is Tony Zamet, Z-A-M-M-I-T. I am the immediate past president of the Rotary Club of Helena. And uh, I was the person that did the highlighting on the map that uh, city manager Schalk mentioned. Um, I brought this proposal to the open lands um, process uh, on behalf of the Helena Rotary Club Originally, it was in 2019, uh, the Chapter 7 rewrite occurred during that time, uh, which meant that it was a part of the 2020 work plan. Uh, I just want to make sure that there's a few things that are very clear in the mayor and commission and public's mind about what happened leading up to this uh, proposal. I did meet with the city's ADA compliance committee. Uh, I also met with the city's non-motorized committee. Um, and I presented the Rotary Club's proposal to both of those committees. Uh, the ADA Compliance Committee actually had a number of suggestions that made it into the proposal that was submitted for the open lands process. Uh, that includes the 60 to 80 inch bench to allow two wheelchairs to safely pass, as well as the three carve outs, which have yet to be constructed, which will have benches and a spot to stop and rest along the way. When this trail is completed, it will be a wonderful addition to Mount Helena. As we've heard tonight, Helena's trails are amazing, but they're not accessible to everybody. The trail that is being construction finally starts to address better access on Mount Helena. And it means that more members of our communities will be able to enjoy our open lands. One of the things that I'd like to address as well is Regarding the process, being involved in a number of open lands issues over the years, uh, I've had the opportunity to make comments to uh, you, Mr. Mayor, and this commission in the past. And one of the things that I said at one of the meetings um, way back when, when the Chapter 7 rewrite was being suggested or uh, commanded for the open or for the city to undertake, is that if this leads to a better public process, then it is a good thing that it has occurred. We will have more robust, better public process with more community involvement. That is not a bad thing. And at the end of the day, this is a trail that Hellenins can be proud of and the Rotary Club is happy uh, to, to have been a part of it and we are very excited to see its completion. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Zavitt. Madam Clerk. Uh, next online, I have Claudia Clifford. You have to pull Ms. Clifford. Yes, thank you. Um, I am a member of the HOMEC committee. Um, so aware of especially the process that we went through with that. 
which I do agree needs to be improved. And yeah, what is, what is being constructive is not what we saw in the beginning of that process. So that very much concerns me in how we go about in the future with this process. But what it comes down to me also, as I walk the trail and talk to some of my friends like Joel, who uh, are representatives of the community of disabled uh, folks, is that we still didn't bring in enough people from that community into this process. We didn't bring in some good expertise that we needed to have to understand really what would make a a really good accessible trail. And I still think that there's an opportunity to do that. Um, I think you've received a letter from Lisa Bay that lay, lays out that, you know, in actuality, the, the ADA doesn't address trails or much about it. it. It's been defaulted to other experts who deal with that issue of what would make trails in our backcountry and front country more accessible. And you should look at her letter, which refers to universal access um, guidelines. And I would hope that we would be able to start to, to improve this trail um, to make it more accessible. I think you've heard plenty of testimony this evening that it's, it's got its shortcomings um, and really needs to be, worked on as something that could uh, be used by more people with disabilities. Because at this point, I'm concerned that this is got too, men, too much of a slope. It um, isn't clear that there won't be bicycles or other obstacles and interference for people who are on this trail. Uh, we need to address those issues. Uh, I would recommend that this be a pedestrian only trail to really make it an accessible trail. That's a key to accessibility. Um, and I would say just in the future, we really, especially when we're dealing with very technical issues like this, should have brought in much more expertise. Um, I was naive enough at the beginning of the process when it was so built. Sure, when it was billed as ADA to think that there would be very specific guidelines that would be followed. And now I learned that that's not the case. So we need to step back and see what we can do to improve this as an accessible trail. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clifford. Madam Clerk. Next hand I have raised is Ed Worrell. You have the floor, Ed. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to thank you guys for allowing public comment on this. Um, I lost my eyesight um, nearly 13 years ago, and the the trails around Mount Helena were some of the first trails I actually hiked with a group called the Montana Association for the Blind that used to um, hold their summer program there every June and even in a part of July. And um, the, the trails around there weren't very accessible, and I'm actually actually very excited to hear that, that the trail's being built and even a wider trail now because I've graduated from white mobility cane user to a guide dog user, and the wider trails are actually going to be a, a very welcome addition. The only concerns um, I actually have, much like people in, in um, wheelchairs or motor, motorized wheelchairs, is that gravel is going to be really loose and it might actually even be hard for dogs to walk on for long periods of time. I know they do make dog booties in that, but that, that gravel probably would be better suited, tighter packed, not just for safety sake for cane users, but uh, some guide dog users as well. Um, again, I just wanted to thank you guys for um, approving the trail and starting the project. And I hope it gets uh, finished within a timely fashion. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Madam Clerk. 
Next online with their hand raised, I have Lori Mack. You have the floor, Lori. You have the floor, Lori. Madam Clerk, we'll come back. Who's next? Mr. Mayor, that is the last hand raised. Lori, you have the floor. Is a hand still raised? Uh, it appears that Lori may be having some technical difficulties. I would remind Lori as well as others that they can type their written public comment into the Q&A and it will be recorded. Thank you. I have one more hand raised. I apologize, Mr. Oh, Mayor. Next time, you better let's do this fast. I, I agree. <laughs> Who has the who's coming up? Uh, Ann Brodsky. You have to flu, Ann. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the commission. I'll try to be short. I think um, the thoughts I had before the meeting have largely been expressed that, first of all, um, people with disabilities should be included in these conversations from the get-go. Um, and then secondly, the public participation process, which is a, a right that Montanans have, not only by statute, but enshrined in our constitution, I think um, wasn't handled as well as it, as it should have been. And I just wanted to point out a comment that has been made, was made by staff that up until a couple of weeks ago, they were only hearing positive comments and then suddenly um, an outcry of negative comments came in, which obviously coincided with when the big construction work started happening on the east side. I'm retired, I live, I hike that mountain every day, <laughs> right where the trail is being built. I knew nothing about it and I read the paper every day. Neighbors didn't know about it. Um, I understand you have a process and I understand any process can be can be improved upon, but the importance of Mount Helena to so many of us, including people with disabilities, so many of us um, is just heartfelt. It's why we live here, really. And so the importance, I think that the fact that there has been this outcry is demonstrative of the fact that um, the process needs to be better for something as important as this. So thank you very much. Thank you, Anne. Is Lori back on? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, I have no other hands raised at this time. I have no written public comment. Okay, thank you. And I want the community to know that we are listening and um, we will take these comments seriously and our administrative staff will look into how best to resolve some of the problems that were outlined. So we thank you all for your comments. At this time, is there anyone who wishes to address the commission on any other topics? Madam Clerk, do we have any raised hand for that? Uh, I do have one hand raised. It is Commissioner Logan. Commissioner Logan, you have the floor. Oh, not only him, but yeah, I see. <laughs> Go ahead, Commissioner Logan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I apologize. Uh, I tried to share this in the commission comments, uh, but I had some technical difficulties. And and uh, but I, if it, with your permission, I'd like to uh, briefly share a, a matter of concern for me, if you don't mind. Go ahead, Commissioner. Thank you. Um, so on Friday, I asked the city clerk to forward you all some emails that that were kind of a back and forth between myself and some property and business owners that addressed an ongoing situation that that they and their customers are, are facing in the 27 to 2900 block of billings. I think we first heard about this in a letter dated September 10th of this year, <clears throat> excuse me, from a property owner who described a serious situation involving homeless that were camped in public rights away and um, the serious impacts that it was having on their um, businesses and 
and to their customers. And so I went to the area about a week and a half ago and visited with a number of them and they echoed what was described in this letter that, that I'd mentioned previously. And, and this uh, population that's living there in the public rights away has, has affected their personal safety, um, that of their staff and, and their customers in a variety of ways, which were detailed in these emails that I shared. And, and, um, but the, it's also had a significant impact on public health as, as this population you know, frequently uses the area for, for defecation, urination, dumping of garbage and raw sewage in the area. And so I guess I'm asking if, if the commission would be open to having staff look into the suggestion that was made by the author of the September 10th letter, um, which was, um, uh, I think, no parking signs on one side of the um, of Billings Avenue and uh, maybe a time constraint on the other side. Um, and, I, and it seemed to me a pretty straightforward approach. And, and I know that it has actually had precedent in being used in another part of town to deal with, with a similar um, problem. So I guess I, I just wanted to bring that forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Commissioner. And I want you to know that, yes, I, I, went, I went down that scene and I will be in favor of that because I saw how dangerous it was when the cars coming from Walmart trying to get onto Billings Avenue. There was no way they could tell because cars were blocking their vision. So that is very dangerous. So I would personally be in support of that. Commissioner Dane. Thank you, Mr. My hand is up to make a couple comments on our previous item, but I, on this topic, I would say um, I would be interested in um, maybe having the staff come back to us with their evaluation of the suggestion and any other um, options that, that might be available. Obviously, this continues to be an issue that's impacting our community and, um, you know, I, I, I think that it's complex and, and um, worth considering multiple solutions. You said you had a couple of comments. Are you done? I'm done on that. Can I can I make my comments on um, the trail? Please. Okay, great. Um, sorry, I didn't catch you before we moved on. Um, so I just want to preface my comments um, first that I was a little bit disheartened um, by the tone and tenor of some of the electronic comments um, regarding this project. Um, everyone was very respectful tonight, which I greatly appreciate, but um, some of the electronic comments um, have been disheartening um, over the last couple of weeks. Um, I think our community has a long history of working together and working through differences. And I hope that this situation um, would be no different. Um, our public lands are obviously at the heart of who we are as residents of Helena and Montanans. Um, and I'm hoping that moving forward, we can do so in a civil and collaborative manner. Um, I would also say that I think it is important that um, as the city, we should be sure that we are following through on what we say we are going to do. Um, I supported this project um, phase one um, in the budget and in the parks major projects, and I still support um, this project. Um, I would just note that you know the commission has not had any presentation or taken under consideration phase two. So I just want to make sure that's clear to those who are who are um, listening tonight. Um, but based on my evaluation of, of what we've heard from the community, um, the chapter seven public process um, seemed to work well until the implementation of this project. Um, I think that the implementation was clearly not what folks who were engaged in the process had expected, um, uh, many of them had expected. And um, I, as Commissioner Halliday noted and um, Director Pinozo and the city manager noted, this was our first go round um, for the chapter seven public process. And I think there are 
a number of lessons learned um, and an opportunity for us to do better in the future. I think specifically, um, we should consider refinements to the process that include um, considering actual designs rather than just conceptual plans. Um, and then going back to the public for additional feedback if and when um, a plan cannot be implemented as proposed. And like many things um, with open lands, um, sometimes the original plan may not be feasible, but that is a time I think to go back for feedback on issues that really so many folks are passionate about. Um, I also think just after having heard some of the public comments tonight, specifically from Mr. Roscoe and Ms. Freestad, that um, ensuring usability um, is important. And in, um, I, I, I'm sure that Parks has taken note um, and, and we'll be working on that in the, the final steps of, of phase one. Um, I just close by saying, you know, I, I think we can improve on this process. Um, and um, I think by doing so, we will be encouraging more community organizations to partner with the city rather than discouraging them. Um, but just want to be sure that we really are um, looking at, at how we can improve um, based on what we've heard. And, and it sounds like after tonight, we are, we are, also, we are headed in the right direction. Um, but I appreciate the time that the community and the commission has put towards um, hearing some of these concerns. Thank you, Commissioner. Madam Clerk, do we have any others who want to address the commission? Uh, Mr. Mayor, commissioners online, I have no other hands raised. I've received no other written public comment. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have any final comments from the commission? Okay, I want to thank you all for participating in tonight's event. And we look forward to looking into all the uh, improvements we need to make on the trail and working with the um, city staff. With that, this meeting is formally adjourned.